on Linux, there is one good option for doing screen capture. Yeah, you could go and run simple screen recorder, or you could even go as far as running things like FFmpeg, but unless you have a really, really slow system, or you just have this intense war against bloat, you're probably going to be running OBS. Unless you're a Wayland user, in which case there were some... Let's go with issues. By issues, I mean you can launch OBS, you can capture audio just fine, but desktop capture is not exactly going to happen. So the Linux build of OBS basically depended on X11. While you could go and run it through X Wayland, you still couldn't really do desktop capture, and X Wayland is going to give you a bit of an overhead, even if you could. The reason for this is the Wayland protocol doesn't actually provide a capture API unlike X11, so what you would have needed to do in the previous solution would be support each of the individual compositors, which might be fine for things like GNOME and Sway, but what about if some random person wants to make a compositor, then that one would then need to get some feature added into OBS, which would just be a massive, massive pain. Basically, people would just end up forking Sway because it would just be easier. Whether it'd be done with plugins for each of the individual compositors or support directly built into OBS, either way, it just would be completely impractical. So the best Wayland solution was the GNOME built-in screen recorder, which, for obvious reasons, isn't exactly portable. Now, depending on what distro you're running, if you're a Wayland user, you might be thinking, but I can record my screen just fine. There's obviously no problem here. There actually is. So before November 2019, there was no way to record Wayland with OBS whatsoever. After that point, this guy right here, I cannot say your name, George, Georgia Stavra, Stavrakis? I, I, I'm i sorry, I, I'm going to butcher your name. This guy actually made a plugin for OBS that allows you to actually do desktop capture on Wayland, and a lot of distros actually ship OBS with this plugin pre-installed. Now, if you are running a distro that doesn't actually ship with this plugin and you want to try it out, it's available on this GitLab right here, but before you go and download it, you don't actually need it for much longer because this functionality is actually being built directly into OBS. And this isn't like some of those features which might get merged into the next version or maybe the version after that, or maybe it'll be six months away. No, no, no. This code has been merged into the code base for OBS 27 and will be in the next version. Now, OBS 27 will be using this plugin to actually provide this functionality. So let's actually have a look at how it works. To actually make this work, it's going to be making use of a couple of fairly new technologies. Those are XDG desktop portals and also Pipewire. So I did a video on Pipewire fairly recently. On my system, I'm just using it to handle my audio, but Pipewire also provides the ability to manage video streams as well. And that makes it absolutely perfect for this functionality. Desktop portals were developed to give flat packs access to Dbus interfaces without exposing every single interface on the system to the application, basically providing some way for it to access things outside of the sandbox. Now, I've talked about why the Flatpak sandbox isn't exactly a sandbox in the past, but that's a topic for a whole nother video. So this can do things like give the application access to a system utility, maybe give it access to, say, a document, or, in this case, give it access to a screencast of your desktop. But desktop portals, even though they're developed for flat packs, aren't actually tied to a flat pack. So you can use it with just no sandbox whatsoever, just running OBS like a regular application, running as a snap, running as an app image, and it should work perfectly fine. It does require your compositor to actually have portal support, but most of the major ones do have this support. So any of the small ones that maybe neglect that, you will still have issues. Now, besides the fact that Pipewire, Wayland, and desktop portals either didn't exist or were in their infancy when OBS actually came to Linux, there's no reason why this functionality couldn't also be added into the X11 version as well. There's just no reason to do so because X11 actually has a native capture API and the desktop portals are useless because X11 has no security to speak of, so it's just an extra step for no reason whatsoever. 
Now, OBS isn't the only application on Wayland that's actually going to make use of Pipewire. I'm sure there are a bunch of awesome things coming down the line, but if you want to try out Pipewire for yourself, it doesn't have a dependency on Wayland. It'll work perfectly fine with X11. You may be wondering why this is taking so long, even though this plugin has been available for almost a year and a half now. So besides the obvious problem of getting the code actually accepted by the OBS team, there was a few little issues that needed to be addressed, and one of those issues is that OBS still didn't run natively on Wayland. While you could run it through xWayland, even though it did have a bit of an overhead, it still worked fine. The problem was that sometimes it didn't actually provide a complete capture and would have some artifacts or other issues that made the recording not very usable. But luckily for us, the developer of this plugin wants this to be fixed as well. And he has this second blog post here detailing everything that needed to be fixed. Now, the technicals are sort of above my pay grade, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. So, the first thing that needed to be done was adding in EGL support to OBS, and this would allow the application to actually be rendered inside of Wayland. So, this is described in this pull request right here, along with the pull requests that actually follow it. Now, EGL is basically an OpenGL interface that's actually used by Wayland to actually render interfaces on the screen. And X11 has a similar thing, this is actually called GLX. With this, OBS could at least be drawn inside of Wayland, and this is what it actually looked like during testing. But if you tried to capture video like this, technically it would be video, but it would probably be running at like one frame a second. What was basically going to happen is the frame that was being stored in the GPU memory would need to be copied to RAM for every single frame, so potentially dozens of megabytes a second or gigabytes a minute of RAM needed to be copied. And for obvious reasons, this needed to be avoided. And the way this is being avoided is through a Linux kernel functionality that allows you to share access to buffers known as DMA buff. So instead of having to copy all of the GPU memory to RAM, instead you're basically just exchanging a couple of IDs, which is far, far less taxing. If you would like to see the API documentation for this, there is a pull request over on the OBS GitHub page that you can go and check out what was actually added. So with the Pipewire powered desktop capture and the native Wayland window, now you have OBS working natively inside of Wayland, but that's not the only thing that's actually going to be changed. The other thing that's being worked on is getting OBS working nicely with Flatpak. So one of those things that needed to be done was auto-generating and auto-posting the Flatpak to Flathub. Why they didn't already have this baffles me, but that's something that's going to be there as well, along with posting the beta version to the Flathub beta. There's still some things that don't really work nicely inside of Flatpaks, like the OBS browser, which means that I won't be live streaming on Wayland anytime soon. The OBS browser basically let you pull in a web browser element and show it on the stream. So that was how I was doing things like, say, stream alerts or having my chat there. And most people typically have those things when they stream. The issue there is it relies on the Chromium embedded framework and it doesn't exactly play nicely with having its ID changed by the Flatpak, so it just doesn't work properly. And there's presumably other plugins that don't exactly play nicely with OBS in a Flatpak, but most of the other ones aren't super important. While I'm not a Wayland user at this point, as things like this continue to get added into Wayland and it actually becomes a reasonable way to use a Linux desktop, it's becoming more and more tempting to actually give Wayland a proper shot. Now, I know we've mainly been focusing on the contributions made by Georges, but I don't want to take away from the other contributions from all of the other people who work on OBS. It's just that without him, I don't think this would be happening now because he's basically been spearheading all of this functionality being added into the OBS project. Now, maining Wayland is a whole nother question, but when it just comes to trying out Wayland software and just giving Wayland more attention, I'm definitely going to be doing that going forward. So expect some sort of Wayland content. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know when it's going to happen, but there will definitely be something related to Wayland. How about this idea? If you want to go make a website to harass me because I haven't made any Wayland videos yet, how about you do so 
over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or even a personal VPN, there'll be one that fits you. I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone, regardless of your plan size. Right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. That'll be everything for me, so before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, Pitty, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave and pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere, and then this channel is available on Odyssey and BitChute if you'd like to watch it on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.